Well, we've got something here. We had something really good before, but this is just another cod. Um, but these cod are taking jigs. This is, oh, look at that. Just wasted the camera. This cod's a fairly good size one. Cod after cod after cod. Look at that. That's a monster. A good size cod on the jig. You know, these cod are bloody solid. Look at that. That's a beauty on the jig. There we go. What a stunning fish. And we'll let him go now. There seemed no end to the number of blue cod we were catching, but what was impressive the most was the fact that we were catching them on jigs, although Paul switched to soft plastics on an elevator rig. But I just kept catching so many blue cod on the 200 gram jig that I was using, it was impressive. With the wind getting up, our time out here was getting limited and we would only have enough time for one more drift before heading back. So she's pretty extreme out here. This is going to be our last drift and then we're going to head back. She's just too, it's just too hard in the kayaks with the camera work and everything, which is... We'll be finding somewhere calmer to go from here. Oh yeah! I'm into something good! Yes! Probably another blue cob by the feel of it. It's got a bit of weight to it though. Could be quite a good uh, blue cod. Hopefully. Here we go. Bit of colour. We're going to get a bit of splashing on the surface. Oh this is a horse of a blue cod. A real good one. And it's splashing everywhere. Look at this. You beauty. Check that out. Woo -hoo -hoo. Nice fish. Check that out for a cod. On the jig. Unbelievable. They've got really big teeth these guys too. We'll let them go. We're not going to be keeping cod till tomorrow. So we'll let this guy go once we get the hook out of his mouth. There we go, there he is. I'm gonna let him go nice and gently. He's a stunning fish. You know, the colors on that, the size of him, he's a massive cod. And he's off really, really quickly. No time to waste that boy, he wanted to go back. Nice fish on this jig. Who needs bait? Well, the uh, wind's just got so bad out here that we have just gotta leave. It's just, we're not getting, we haven't had any pucker. So yeah, time to go. It's it's uh, she's pretty gnarly out here now. So we're going to go into a bit of shelter, hopefully, find a find a nice place to sort of sit for a while and um, get out of this wind. But she's not the easiest, certainly not the easiest to fish in either, and film, of course. So yeah, all part of the experience at Chatham Island, though. She's pretty extreme, that's for sure. You probably can't see it quite on the camera, but oh, she's, she's not nice. You can see behind me just how rough it is, you know. She ain't pleasant, that's for sure. So yeah, we're going to head in, head in out of this wind a bit and, and probably end up being in the bay at Port Hutt again. That's a really nice uh, blue cod you've got there, Paul. Yeah, mate, it was a little bit rough out there today and uh, it was hard to find the harp hooker, but um, I'm pretty happy with these. Uh, caught on the captain's elevator rig. Um, brilliant, brilliant fun. What kind of soft bait was that you caught it on, Paul? Dropping Nemesis down there today, um, see what's around. Got a few um, cooter and uh, some of these. 
It's quite amazing. It seems that the bigger the the blue cod, the bigger the soft bait, the bigger the blue cod, eh? That's right. Yeah, they, these guys um, hover these down, hover them down. Well, mate, that was a bit of a paddle, mate. You know, windy out there or what, eh? Well, it looked calm as this morning, eh, Rob? But uh, it certainly blew up out there today. Bit testing, mate. You know, she's she's pretty gnarly, and the hardest part is trying to come back in against that wind, and then and get in against the land to try and stop us. You know, get out of that wind and and the kelp. You know, yeah. the kelp in our paddles, and yeah. boy, hard work. And Definitely. no 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 half booker today, but we gave it a go, mate. You know, this place is pretty extreme, eh? That's good fun. Those cod are taking anything down there, eh? They're, and they're taking jigs, they're taking soft baits, they're taking hooks without anything on them. They're, they're voracious. There's a lot of them there. Yeah, I mean, what awesome fun. 200 gram jig catching blue cod, I mean. Yeah. You know, that's what the Chatham Islands is all about. So, you know, let's hopefully we can get some calmer weather. We're going to go for a dive this afternoon. Awesome. Get some power, have a look at the underwater world. So, looking forward to that. Sure are. On day five, we went for a bit of a drive. The wind was up and we did a bit of a look around. We went and did the look for prehistoric shark teeth in the lagoon. But also we went out to Waitangi and had a bit of a dive. Now, it's quite interesting we pulled up there because the the people were telling us there's great whites out there so don't go out into the middle of the bay you know it's pretty daunting when you're getting in for a dive to hear stuff like that but we stayed right up in the shallows and saw plenty of fish life and also power you know we were there to gather a feed of power and you know I ate so much power while I was there it was just incredible and I love power but we just cut some power up and chucked it on the barbecue quite often too for lunch or whatever and that was pretty cool so of course, you know, we, we also, Wayne, who's into his hunting, went and um, took another guy, local, and his offsider up for a bit of a hunt. And they ended up getting one of these um, amazing sheep that were planted there from Pitt Island. You know, Doc wanted all these sheep off Pitt Island, so Kev from Port Hutt, he basically, um, he, he got some of them and put them on in the back bits of the land and and they just ran wild but they bred in um spanish sheep i think they were yes spanish sheep and we ate one of them and they were beautiful eating you know so this is the kind of stuff that they do over there they just basically you know live off the land we went out gathering on our last day there on day six the boys are just suiting up the boys are going to get some power As soon as you reach the sea floor, you find multitudes of marine life. Power in every nook and cranny, it wasn't hard to find them. Kelp wavered in the currents and mesmerised me. This magic underwater world was full of marine life, like blue cod, whose curiosity had got the better of them and they just had to come in and check me out. For an underwater hunter and gatherer like me, this place had everything to offer, like butterfish and blue cod. Then there was the mokey. I saw some amazing sized mokey around it, quite close to the coast, with some of them being in the 20 pound mark. Everyone was busy gathering some power to take home the next day and for our feast that evening. Some even spared a couple of butterfish. Back on shore, everyone was doing their part, counting and measuring the seafood that we were gathering. While this went on, I headed out wider in search of further adventure and a chance to explore uncharted waters. Even though I was excited to explore this environment, I still had the great white thing in the back of my mind. As I swam, many times up and down from the surface 
it constantly crossed my mind the potential for one to come in and pay me a visit. cool things about Chatham Island is some of the local characters that you meet out there. One guy that I really got to know while I was out there was Floyd. Now Floyd is a local free diver. He's an amazing guy, amazing diver and Floyd commercially dives for power and crayfish and he was telling me some of the stories about the great whites out there and yeah you know it was pretty amazing. So he was one of the cool characters that I got to meet and I even went for a dive with him. It was interesting the way that he spearfished out there. He'd go along with the spear gun and shoot blue cod and then leave them on the line that actually attaches to the gun. I was quite intrigued by that considering the great white population out there. And um, But that's how they do things out there and he just speared blue cod and the more blue cod he had on his, um, on his line from his spear to his gun the more um, blue cod came up to have a look and he'd just spear another one. So really talented guy and really enjoyed spending a lot of time with him. He showed me a lot of cool things. Even within Port Hutt there was a couple of wrecks in there and we got to see so much of it, you know, underwater. So um, I went into a wreck that was on the other side of Port Hutt where we were staying and dived down into it and saw huge blue mochi and trevally. That were in there. Unfortunately I didn't get any trevally on camera but I did get some of these blue mochi and they were just they were huge you know 20 pound plus fish they would have been epic to um, catch on a line. I was also blown away by the fish life you know I had blue cod coming up and biting my camera while I was diving and just surrounding me and they are just amazing you know you don't realize how ferocious um, blue cod are until you get in the water with them they're coming up biting my hands and gloves and and just really really inquisitive and keen to feed on whatever they could so that was one of the cool things that I did there and I got to also see some pretty amazing fish life gathering a whole bunch of kaimawana for our evening dinner. We had a massive nosh up, we had wild Spanish lamb on a spit. Look at that, the spit cooking away. It's looking awesome, very nice indeed. Can't wait to try this beautiful Chatham Island lamb. We had the UFO cooker, we had so much cooked in that. We had all this amazing power and also fish parcels, you name it. It was just impressive. So that was really cool for our last night there. We really had a bit of a nosh up. Had too, way too many drinks that night and just enjoyed it. So that was our trip to Chatham Island. It was an epic place to visit, you know, something that I'll never forget in my entire life, you know. And to go kayak fishing out there was just even made it even more special. I've kept in touch with some of the locals and there's some really cool people out there. They're so accommodating and if you ever get the opportunity to go out there, I highly recommend it. The kayaks are still out there and one day 
I may actually go back and visit that place.